Hello, everybody. Okay, so I'm Jelani, and I'm going to talk to you about some research I did over the last five years or so while I was at MIT on streaming algorithms. Don't worry, I'll tell you more about what that means later. So first, you know, I just want to clear up, you know, what is an algorithm? An algorithm is just a uh, procedure for doing something. So I think most of you are familiar with algorithms. You might just not know it. So for example, when you're in lower school, you'll learn how to multiply two numbers. Right? And there's a procedure for doing that. You know, you write out one line, and you move the next digit, et cetera, and you add up all the intermediate steps. That's an algorithm to multiply two numbers, OK? So that's what algorithms is about, doing things, uh, procedures for doing things. OK. So what am I talking about? Oh, by the way, the timer is not running. But, um, so OK, so information creation in the world. <clears throat> OK, so uh, I'm looking at algorithms for processing massive amounts of data. And you know, I want to show you this, uh, this trend that was observed by this uh, research company, the IDC. Uh, back in 2002, they estimated that the amount of information created in the world was five exabytes. What's an exabyte? An exabyte is a billion gigabytes. So you imagine that if you filled up a sheet of paper, let's say, let's say you can fit 1,000 letters on a sheet of paper. Okay, I'm, I'm not really sure if that's completely accurate, but it's a ballpark estimate. Uh, that'd be about hundred. That'd be about a million billion sheets of paper. Okay, that's one exabyte, and this that was five in two thousand two, and just five years later, that blew up by a factor of more than fifty, and they predicted that three years later again it would blow up by another factor, and it was just kind of exponential growth. Okay, and in fact, there's this quote by Mark Hurd, who's the former CEO of Hewlett Packard, that. Uh, from 2009, more data will be created in the next four years than in the history of planet Earth. Okay. So uh, there's kind of a data explosion. And what my research was investigating was how should this affect the way that we process data, okay. the fact that we have this uh, data explosion. And there's another thing you know, that I want to show you which I think is kind of interesting. This is a plot of the amount of information created every year. Uh, versus the amount of available storage we have on Earth. And when I say available storage, I mean you know, add up all the hard drive capacities everywhere that everyone has. Okay? So this top, plot, this top line is the amount of information created. And, and that's in exabytes, uh, a billion gigabytes per year. And then right below it is available storage. And as of 2007, you know, we don't even have enough storage to store all the data that we're generating. Okay? Uh, and you know, so that seems kind of worrisome. And we can't store all the data we're generating. But we have to ask, you know, why might it be worrisome? What do we do with data? Okay? And well, there are two things that we often do with data. We communicate it. You know, I send you an email or something like that. Um, we also like to query data. So you imagine that you're some big company. You know, you're collecting lots of customer logs, et cetera. And you want to mine that data and understand you know, what are people buying, what are the trends, et cetera. Right? So you want to understand your data. Um, so that's what I mean by query it. Okay. So there are two techniques that uh, I'm going to talk about for, for dealing with massive data. And that's sketching and streaming. And they're related. Okay. So what's sketching? Sketching is I have my data. You know, I have all the emails I've ever received. Or I have all the customer orders I've ever received, et cetera. And there's some function of the data I want to know. For example, you know, what's the hot item that people are buying this month? Okay, so that's my function. And I know what kinds of functions I want to compute, and I want to compress the data in such a way that I can still recover the information I want just from the compressed form of the data. Okay? And this compressed form is what I'm calling a sketch, a sketch of the data. And what's streaming? Streaming is just sketching where you want to maintain the sketch of the data on the fly as you see more and more data. Okay? So I'm a, I'm a company here receiving my, I'm Amazon.com, right? I'm receiving orders. My data is, the, is the, you know, the logs of all the orders I've ever received. And I, as I receive more and more orders, I want to maintain a sketch of that customer data on the fly. Right? So that's a streaming problem. Okay. And I want to run through kind of a toy example uh, that um, compressing the works of Shakespeare. So here's the problem. Okay, so Shakespeare wrote a lot of stuff. Okay, imagine that. I want to estimate what's the size of Shakespeare's vocabulary. And what I'm, what I'm allowed to do is I'm allowed to read through all his works just in one pass, you know, every sonnet, every play, et cetera, every email he ever wrote. 
So that's a bad joke. <laughs> okay. And I want to know what the size of the vocabulary is. And, you know, naively one way you might do it is, well, I'll have, you know, a dictionary just kind of that starts off blank. And every time I see a word, I'll say, okay, I saw that word. Or maybe as I see new words, I'll, you know, write them up on a piece of paper. So, you know, I, I see why Romeo art thou mad. I say, okay, well, I, I've seen these words now. Okay. And then I keep going. I move on to another one. Another line, again, from Romeo and Juliet. Some of these words I've seen already. In fact, uh, three of these, you know, Romeo's repeated three times in the same sentence, right? Okay, so I update what I've seen. And at the end, what I want to know is the size of his vocabulary. How many words did I see? Well, you know, I saw seven words here. And the point is, it's not, it's not just, you know, how many words were printed on the pages, because some words are repeated, right? I want to know what the size of his vocabulary is, how many distinct words were there. Okay, so this is one way of solving it. But you could imagine that, you know, over all the works of Shakespeare, this sheet would get really long, right? Um, okay, and, but in fact, using streaming techniques, it's possible to not write that much. So in fact, what I'm showing you is a sketch of all the works of Shakespeare, okay? So I'm taking this from a paper of Duran and Flagellet, and this is the sketch. I mean, basically, you know, they took a sheet uh, of paper that was about this big, and they could run through all the works of Shakespeare and only work with you know, data, only work with a representation of all the works of Shakespeare that fits in a sheet this big and be able to infer from this sheet how many distinct words there were to within a very small uh, accuracy, very small error, okay? So I'm not going to talk to you about how that, how their method worked, okay? Um, and in fact, you know, we have some better methods now, but I just want to show you that this is possible. This is what a sketch looks like, okay? It's really short, um, okay? Another uh, sketching and streaming example, Google Trends. I don't know, just a show of hands. How many people have been to google.com slash trends? Anyone? I see, I see at least two, three, four. Okay, I see, I, see, I see some hands. Okay, so what is Google Trends? It just keeps track of what are the hot searches. You know, what are people searching for right now? So I just took this uh, yesterday, actually. And so, like, item number one, Max Talbot. I believe he's a hockey player who recently... Actually, I don't know what he did, but Linda Evangelista, um, I don't know, you people know Selma Hayek? Uh, apparently, her, uh, her husband uh, fathered a child with Linda Evangelista, so, <laughs> so <laughs> a lot of people were searching for her, I guess, yesterday for that reason. Fourth of July is coming up, so a lot of people were searching for Declaration of Independence and fireworks, Independence Day. Um, I don't know why Canada Day is around Fourth of July. <laughs> Actually, the Canada Day just happened too, but uh, I guess... It's very close to our 4th of July. So. <laughs> okay. Yeah. No, no, no offense to Canada. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, another example of, of sketching. So uh, this is, so this, this problem is called kind of, you know, estimating document similarity. So let me tell you what that's about. So, you know, we probably all here use search engines. And suppose that you're searching for something like, you know, a bio of Barack Obama or something. Okay, um, someone probably did a really good job of writing a bio, and that bio is mirrored on lots of different websites. Okay, uh, but when you search for such a thing, when you search for this bio, you're going to have lots of results coming back, and you don't want them all to be the same bio just mirrored on different web pages, right? You want to get some diversity in your results, and that's a problem that a lot of search engines had to face. Alta Vista is the one that first looked at this problem back in the 90s. Uh, they're kind of, I think, dead now as a search engine, but they're the ones who first, uh, who first did this. And there the problem is, you know, uh, you could go through the page. So, you know, the search engine figures out which websites are good hits for this, for, for a good match for your query. And now you need to filter out the duplicates. Okay. So you could go through the pages and just compare pairs of pages, and if something is a duplicate, toss it out, okay? Of course, it's not exact duplicates, it's near duplicates, right? Because sometimes when I mirror a web page, I might change the font or change a background color or add some surrounding text or something. So these aren't going to be exact duplicates, but so near duplicates. But even then, you know, it's kind of slow to compare pairs of web pages, especially if the web pages are really big, okay? Um, and if it's slow to compare web pages and filter out the duplicates, what that means for you 
is it's going to be slow to get back the results from your query to the search engine. And they don't want that, and you don't want that either. Right? Well, they don't want that because you don't want that. Uh, OK, so what they did was they sketched all the web pages that they crawled. So remember that little box? You could take a big web page, you know, doesn't matter how big it is, and sketch it to something really small so that you can compare the, just the sketches and see just how similar our web pages are. And if they're too similar, they filter them out. And that's exactly what they do. That's what search engines do now. And that's what they've been doing since uh, AltaVista. OK. So <clears throat> there are lots of things that uh, we know how to do now, right? Um, you know, we know how to go through Shakespeare and estimate the size of the vocabulary. Um, uh, we know how to de detect what's hot, how to compare web pages, et cetera. There's some other really uh, interesting kind of toy problems. Like, uh, suppose I give you a really long sequence of numbers and there's a repetition and I ask you, um, you know, give me a number that repeated twice in that sequence. There, there are lots of things we know how to do, lots of different functions we can compute. So what, you know, what's, what is there left to do? So one thing that, you know, I think is a really interesting direction uh, for research to go in in this area is something that I call simultaneous sketching. Okay. So what did I, what did I say sketching was? There's some function of the data I know I want to compute. For example, um, I know that I want to know what the hot queries were, right? And if I know what function I want to compute, there's a certain way I'll sketch the data, okay? And what I'm really interested in is what kind of one sketch to rule them all. Okay, so this is the, the one ring from Lord of the Rings. I don't know, I'm a fan of it. So it's, um, and, and what that is is, well, you know, there's data coming at me, right? I'm Google, people are making queries. I'm Amazon, people are ordering things. And I might not know exactly what questions I want to ask about the data later. Okay, all I know is data's coming at me now. I need to store some compressed representation of it now because, you know, maybe it's just so massive, right, that I don't want to store everything. And, you know, what should I store so that I can still recover lots, I can still answer lots of different questions about the data later, okay? Um, so that's something that, you know, we actually don't really understand right now, um, how, to, how to develop algorithms that can do that. Another, uh, and the second and last thing that I wanted to talk about, uh, the final direction, is distributed computing on massive data. So as I said it with streaming, I, I, I said it as if, you know, you're a computer here, there's data coming at you, and you have to process it as it comes at you. But really, if you look at Google or other big companies, they don't just have one computer, right? They, have, they buy millions of computers, they're all networked up, they're massively parallel, and they can run massively parallel jobs on all, the, on all their data. Uh, MapReduce is, in fact, the system that Google has developed uh, for massive parallelization of computation. And Hadoop is a similar thing to MapReduce, but it's open source, okay? So these systems are out there, and kind of there's research in two directions that I think is, is interesting here. Uh, one is, how can we model these systems rigorously, and by rigorously I mean mathematically, to de then develop kind of good algorithms. And when I say good algorithms, I mean provably good. So model these things mathematically and you know, show what you can and can't do. So that's something that people have started working on only very recently, but there's still a whole lot of work to be done there. And another thing is, can we use kind of theoretical insight and mathematical understanding to guide how we should have developed these systems in the first place? Okay. Um, and with that, I just wanted to, to uh, thank you. Thank <laughs> you.